Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRoo.com. What's your morning horn of Z's, your sip of tea, day two of the cleanse. Woohoo, I feel skinny already. All right, um, Deutsche Bank is back in the news. Uh, it's going to be a full day. There's a lot of bailouts coming later today. I got up early to get some news out first before I have to dig into the bailouts and all that. So Deutsche Bank is now getting busted again. Now remember, they are now the second or third most systemic bank. They were the first before Citibank and JP Morgan decide, decided to go hog wild on the derivatives, which I'll talk about in a second. But Deutsche Bank still has 40, about 40 plus. Nobody knows for sure how much derivatives they have, but they are absolutely bankrupt. There's no way out, and there hasn't been any way out for a long time. Reuters article. Deutsche Bank took years to flag suspect dance money flows, source says. Deutsche Bank did not disclose more than 1 million suspected money transfers with Dance Bank until February. A person with direct knowledge of this matter said about five years after a whistleblower flagged suspicious transactions at Dance Bank. Now, here's the deal. When, when they say that uh, cryptocurrencies are used for money laundering and, and drug dealing and all that, and need regulation. Deutsche Bank is 100% regulated. Every single one of these criminal transactions took place with the approval of the regulators. So don't tell me that cryptocurrencies need regulators to keep it, you know, so they don't money launder. This is the probably the, one of the largest money laundering operations ever. For years, and all these transactions had to be approved by the SWIFT system and the European regulators. Don't tell me we need regulation. The only thing regulation is good for is to run cover for criminals. This is ridiculous. Deutsche sent alerts about suspect money flows involving the Danish bank to Germans' money laundering data authority and state prosecutors, the person said, prompting investigators to seek more information. What? So they reported it to Germany's money laundering authority and state prosecutors, and they didn't do anything for five years. Prosecutors are now investigating whether staff or management at Deutsche, how about staff or management at the data authority, laundering data authority and state prosecutors, sanction the transactions, whether they subsequently tried to cover them up, the person said, speaking on condition of anonymity. Deutsche Bank did not comment on the time taken to flag the transactions to authorities, which has previously not been reported, but said it ended its relationship with Dansk in 2015 and strengthened its money laundering controls bullshit. Dansk Bank was ejected from Estonia this year after admitting 200 billion euros or $220 billion of suspicious money flowed through its bank between 2007 and 2015. You cannot flow through a bank without hitting all kinds of regulators. It is the regulators that are the problem because they run cover for the criminals, which makes them co-conspirators with the criminals. Deutsche was dragged into the scandal because it pro processed the bulk transactions for a Danish bank, leading German prosecutors to visit Deutsche Bank headquarters last month. With police and a search warrant, asked about the case, Deutsche Bank said in an email statement, and it, quote, remains committed to providing appropriate information to all authorized investigations. Appropriate information or all information? Oh, that's not appropriate. You, it's not appropriate to see how many times the regulators were bribed. <laughs> in This is just, it's classic. But the fact that it's coming out and it's allowed to come out is important because right now Deutsche Bank's in trouble. Deutsche Bank shrinking thanks to low interest rates and anemic EU recovery. Based on losses we have seen in the last two quarters, Deutsche Bank is set to lose money this year, making it four out of five out of the five last years. Given ECB moves to further cut rates into negative territory as well as an EU economic slowdown, there are no prospects of better days on the horizon for EU banking. Deutsche Bank has cushioned, was cushioned slightly from the worst effects of the low interest rate environments by German economic performance, which is now slipping as well. 
Deutsche Bank is screwed. And this also, this, when it rains, it pours. Deutsche Bank gave lavish gifts to Chinese leaders. What does that sound like? German newspaper Sudunk, <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to say it, reports that Deutsche Bank gave expensive gifts to senior Chinese officials at a time when it was trying to establish itself as a major player in China's financial in industry. Together with German public broadcaster WDR and the New York Times, the New York the newspaper reports that the bank also gave jobs to children of Chinese political and economic elite. So New York Times is coming out now. Do you think they're trying to take down Deutsche Bank, one of the largest derivative counterparties in the world? It's all about the derivatives, my friend. You want to take down the system? There is, by the way, my friend, my very good friend is is trapped on a on an island in the middle of the ocean. Bitcoin Ben, love him to death. Um, he got his people don't his people who are telling him about the derivative, how they're going to fix the derivative problem. Clearly, have no clue of the scope of the de derivative problem. It can't be fixed. It cannot be fixed. The idea was not to fix it. The idea was to build it as that neutron bomb that kills the system. That's why Greenspan and friends took it off any kind of regulation in the 90s. They knew they could blow it up so big that there's no way to fix it. You can't derivatize it. You can't get rid of them. No, Ben, you're getting the wrong information on the Fed. Whatever the Fed is doing, it's not enough. And I'll show you why it's not enough. This is the, this is the OCC report on derivatives. Now, it's not like I'm just starting out studying this derivative stuff. It's been 20 years since I've been diving into this. And it, it truly is what Warren Buffett said it was, a weapon of mass financial destruction. What he didn't say is that it was purposefully put into the system to des destroy the entire system, not just little bits of it, the entire system. It's not something that the back system can solve. It's not something that the Federal Reserve can solve. It was put there to destroy the system. And I'll show you just how big the problem is. First of all, ICE, the, the uh, Intercontinental Exchange, is a criminal exchange. You know, started by the oil guys back in the 80s and 90s. And they ended up buying all the exchanges because it's all derivatives. And it's all how the Ponzi schemes works, how the bad guys run the system. Of course, you're going to hear from the bad guys that this is how they're going to fix the issue or paper over the issue or transition the issue. That's what they're going to say because that's all they know how to do. They, don't, they didn't know it was happening when it happened. They don't know what's going on now. As far as ICE, it is, a, it is not the derivative exchange. Right now, there is a total of, according to the OCC report, 42%, only 42% of the derivatives on tr are traded on ICE, which is all the derivative exchanges in the world. The rest are OTC over the counter, and you don't know anything. The structure of these derivatives is insane. These are only the vanilla derivatives, and 42% is still in the probably over a quadrillion dollars. Quadrillion. There, it, you cannot manage out of this, and that was set up that way. And you can't catch up to it. You know, all the bailouts that are going now are nothing compared to how fast it's rising. You're going to need a fire hose, and there's shoot. It's like it's like going hunting for elephants with a Nerf gun. <laughs> That's what's happening with backed in the Federal Reserve. Take a look at these. I'm just saying. Now this is just U.S. commercial banks and savings associations. Look at the derivative problem growing and growing. Now, for 2019, this is just this is the end of the year for these years, all the way up to 2017. You can see it peaked in, what's that, 2013. All this is trying to save the system. It's going back down. And then all of a sudden, we have a huge rise. This jump from here to here is only the first two um, quarters. The third quarter was a monster derivative quarter. Mark my words, it's going to be jump out here. By the end of the year, it will be the highest on record. You can't slow this down. It's not jumping up by hundreds of billions. It's jumping up by trillions. Trillions with a T. And it has to get higher and bigger just to keep the system going. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. For those of you in gold and silver wondering why the gold and silver prices haven't moved, 
Here's your answer. <laughs> here's the here's the derivatives. This is just this is just basically Citibank and JP Morgan. Take a look at it. It went in 2001 less than about uh, it was about 2.2.7 billion dollars. Look at the derivative. You want to know why it hasn't been allowed to run? We're up at 38 billion and moving. This is not gold, by the way. This does not count gold. Gold got so big they had to throw it into foreign exchange <laughs> calculations. That's the insane part. There's so many insane parts. And this is just the US. I want to show you something. This is from the BIS. BIS puts out some derivative stats for the whole world, at least what they know about. And you look at these numbers. I mean, Bitcoin Ben, <laughs> how are you gonna how are you gonna stop the derivative flow? Look at the average turnover. This is just daily, daily turnover. In February, it was six trillion dollars per day. What's the Fed bailout number right now? Two hundred and twenty billion. This is six trillion per day, and the Fed's got two hundred and twenty billion. But look what happened over the last, you know, since the reporting from February to June, it's now at ten trillion per day. Like I said, shooting an elephant with a Nerf gun, it ain't gonna work. I'm sorry. I'm Ben. Tell your your people and and Dick Allgaier, Tell your people. I'm sorry. Their system was destroyed. They didn't know. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know that this poison pill was injected into the system. Greenspan knew. He knew. You give a bank enough rope to hang himself, he's going to hang himself. And these controllers, shall we call them, who are trying to fix the system now, hung themselves. I'm sorry. There's nothing you can do. There is no saving that. It'll only get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It is not getting absorbed into the Fed. First of all, the Fed's not, the only derivatives the Fed's buying, supposedly, at least that what, what they report, right, uh, are mortgage-backed securities. The U.S. Treasuries, are, they're not buying the derivatives of that. Supposedly, they're buying the actual Treasuries. Back trades in the derivatives of that shit. Actually, probably does the real thing, too. I don't know. But they do all the derivatives of it, the derivatives of the Treasuries. Absolutely. And it's shown up in the interest rates, interest rate swaps and things like that. But that's just futures. What about the options? Another 3.6 trillion, 14 trillion every single day. And you think the Fed, who's bailing out 200 billion, is going to catch up? They'll never catch up. They'll never derivatize, they'll never tokenize the back system and all that. It'll never be tokenized. Yes. Absolutely, Bitcoin will go crazy. So will gold and silver and all kinds of cryptocurrencies because the old system is dying. But when the old system dies, it is dead. You, there's no fixing it. There's no smooth transition. It just won't happen. And one day, probably soon, I think this year, it will just freeze up and stop trading. The bots will fight against each other because it's all computer controlled. The moment that the good guys decide I'm going to end the system on the click of this mouse. And it could be someone within the good guys. It could be someone who originally set up the program. How about Stephen Duveau? The guy from the Fed Boston who originally wrote the Road to Rooted documents. Originally wrote all the computer programs with Alan Greenspan to control the system in the 70s. Think about it. The way it's going to happen is not going to be a stock market crash, a bond market crash, a bank crash. It's going to be the system stopping. All the gears and, and computer programs locking together and nobody knows the price of anything. Boom. Over. That's when you go to Congress. That's when Congress says no. And we get to move on. Yes, it'll be brutal. Yes, it'll be chaotic. But we're in that process now. 
if you talk about what is there a way to smooth transition out of the multi quadrillion dollar derivative market the answer is a big n o and it's not going to be through backed a backed will obviously be a huge benefactor of the system falling apart because people need a place to run to put their money but it's not going to be taking over the derivative situation yes backed is a derivative exchange they don't deal in the real thing supposedly they have the inventories the custodianship you get that's trust i still don't know i haven't heard Does, has anybody heard whether or not you own the private keys in the custodian i guarantee you you don't so it's not a real exchange it's a derivative exchange well we know they just trade futures and options i don't know if they're an option chip. futures of bitcoin so first of all it's just a, it just doesn't mean anything yet it might one day but if people don't own <laughs> the private key hold their private key it's just another joke it's just another ridiculous joke set up by the same criminals at ice who have been rehypothecating assets behind the scenes along with the DTCC, it's at the broker-dealer level. I talked about this when I was talking to Dick Allgaard. It's at the broker-dealer level that these things are rehypothecated because it's all computer blips. How many times can they sell the same share of stock? ICE is in big trouble. They are absolutely rehypothecating assets. So to, to think that they'll be the ones to take over and not save the system, but offer some kind of smooth transition? No. They're the criminals who are being put out to pasture. They're the ones who are going to get arrested. Anyway, if you're looking for out of the old system and into the new, here is your commercial for the day. This spot is brought to you by Perpetual Assets. Um, no, everybody's asking me, oh my God, what do I do with my retirement money? I need to get it out of the system. I say, call Will Lair. Perpetualassets.com. What do they do? He'll set you up with a self-directed IRA where you hold your cryptos or your silver in your own possession. If you're in a third-party type of custodianship of your assets, gold, silver, or cryptos in an IRA, you don't have any choice. That company is going under and you're going to lose it, in my opinion. Call Perpetual Assets, ask for Will Lair and say, hey, Vic said you can help me out with my retirement funds that I need to get out of the system. I need to get them in my own possession because it's the only thing that's going to survive in your own possession. And just a brief look, in 2008, you know, there was all those bank bailouts. Nobody ever figured out how much there was. Obviously, Hank Paulson went to Congress for $700 billion, but we all know that the banks can... Uh, it's a fractional reserve system. So they get 700 billion, they can lend out 7 trillion at 10 to 1. Most of them did more than that. And then there was all kinds of secret bailouts. Finally, in December of 2011, the Fed was forced to give it up how much was actually pumped into the system. Here's a paper on it, $29 trillion. Here's the first paragraph. There have been a number of estimates of the total amount of funding provided by the Federal Reserve to bail out the financial system. This is in 2008, in 2009, and 2010. Um, ranging from the Fed's own claim of only $1.2 trillion to Bloomberg's estimate, estimate of $7.7 trillion, just for the biggest banks. And the Government Accountability Office tally of $16 trillion. As part of the Ford Foundation project that I am directing, a research and policy dialogue, blah, 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 have undertaken a detailed examination of the raw data pried from the Fed by lawsuit and congressional order. Fickerson's new working paper issued by the Levy Institute is the first in a series that will report their results. The headline summary is that the Fed committed more than $29 trillion in the form of loans and asset purchases to prop up the global financial system. Beneficiaries include member banks, investment banks, and the rest of the shadow banking system, industrial firms, foreign banks, and central banks, and even individuals such as 
The Real Housewives of Wall Street, identified in Rolling Stones by Rolling Stones' Matt Tybini. Um, yeah, it was, you know, on face it was seven hundred billion that they went to Congress for, and then but they actually bailed out twenty nine trillion. I'm thinking they come to Congress for twenty trillion, and then the real numbers three hundred, four hundred trillion, just for another ten years. That's the amazing thing. Very interesting times. I will be digging into today's uh, Fed bailout. Should be an interesting day, interesting week. I don't know if at all, you know, the the huge bulk will come today, but all week I'm going to tally it up. I keep a tally, tally going on the private road. Come visit me there. Uh, speaking of private road, this is one of the last calls. See, Veritas, I'm giving away one Veri token in a paper wallet plus a silver coin for every private road membership and renewal. And I keep saying, okay, if Veri goes over $20, I'm going to stop this. And voila, it keeps bumping over $20. There's the sat theta. Um, I know theta is massively undervalued. Absolutely get it if you can. Uh, but Veritasium keeps jumping up over 20 and is just flirting with it. So right now I'm still giving away a Veritasium token, um, but not for long. Veritasium has the ability to go moonshot at any moment with some good news that a settlement happens, maybe, or something. Any kind of news, because it's such a thinly traded market, it can move monster moves in a blink of an eye. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how long I'll be giving away. But, hey, if you want to join the Ruta, Ro the private road, go to roadtoruta.com, hit subscribe today, and I'll be getting back with you with today's bailout from the banks shortly. This is Bix, roadtoruta.com. Talk to you later.